I had a good day today. We went to a swap meet, and I'll show you the score that I picked up in a minute. So I said a couple of, a couple of videos ago that we're done building cars. We're done building projects. And that doesn't mean we're going to stop working with stuff. Obviously, that's what the, the crux of this channel is. But we're done building cars. We've done a lot. We started this channel four years ago. We did the, the daily driver swinger. We did the motor, the trans, the body work, the paint, and all of that on the swinger, which, by the way, is still out there doing, because people ask me about that car often. The car's still out there doing daily driver, Kathy, tooling around the neighborhood with it. Um, oh, God. We did uh, the Miata, the Slant 6 Miata, which died from lack of interest. Car was, car was running, was finished, but couldn't get anybody to take it to a motocross, autocross thing. So I was just like, mm, done. And I wanted to use the parts for other, other projects. So we parted that one out. But we built, uh, we built Plan Z. We built Bottle Rocket. We built Slaghammer, which Al has currently got Slaghammer, but it'll be back here within the next like two weeks or so. And there's more things that I need to do on that car. Uh, but anyway, make a long story short. The time for building cars is over. It takes too much. It takes too much. So at this point, we've got our fleet basically assembled. And now it's time to actually put these things to use. And instead of building them, refine them, modify them, work with them, and go have fun with them. Not that I don't have fun here in the shop. This is actually my favorite thing. But, you know, there's no sense in building something and then just not doing anything with it, which is something I have a habit of doing. So all of these cars are going to start getting their workouts now. And, uh, oh, so along the lines of, of modifying and refining, check this out. I picked this up today. Look at this. Ooh. Okay, no, I didn't get the Dominator today. I had that. But I picked up this beautiful Torker 340 and the adapter from the 4150 to the Dominator flange. Right? Ready for this one? $110. $110. Bucks. Paid $100 bucks for the intake manifold, $10 for the adapter. Right? So, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. Right? Uh, and this is for one of those upgrades and refinements that we'll be doing next year. Right, so, and I don't want to talk anything else about it. I don't want to talk anything else about it, but you're going to see plenty of this next year. Okay, so if we're going to take these cars out and actually use them, we need a way to get there. So what we've been using so far is our wrecker, and we've already, we already did a video on this. It's a, it's a 1980 Dodge Retriever, which was a dealer available wrecker package. So, uh, here she is, otherwise known as the Moto, and I have been giving this thing some love for the last few days, and believe me when I tell you, this thing needs love. So, here's the background story on this, and we already did a, we already did a video on this, but it was a while ago, so I'll bring you up to speed. I bought that truck about 11 years ago, 12 years ago. And I used it in my parts business. I had, a, I had a yard where I was parting out Mopars. And so I used this thing for pulling engines and dragging cars around. And this was like a Swiss army knife. But it never really left the lot. You know, there was no reason to make it like roadworthy. And the guy that I had bought it from uh, had used it for the previous 10, 15 years, whatever it was. He was a scrapper. And all this thing was used for was picking up you know, scrap cars and hauling them off to, so it never got any love. This was like the most neglected truck. You, I mean, you just couldn't imagine, okay? So uh, when we started doing YouTube, I put some effort into getting it roadworthy. Um, I fixed the lights. I got the, I got it to stop. I got it to like go fairly reliably, right? But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get too crazy with it. And the few times that we have, we have gone out with our cars, this is what we've used. So now it's time to actually put some effort into this thing, which is what I've been doing, I guess, for the last couple of days. So the the basic problem with this truck is that it was never intended to be used the way I'm using it. This was intended to, to just pick up cars, 
off the street and bring them to repair shops or wherever it happened to be. That's what it's designed for. So to use this thing as a proper tow vehicle, it's, uh, it's lacking. It's lacking. There's no real place to put tools or equipment or anything like that. I, what I really, what I really need is a ramp truck, which I used to have one. I, I had a, a 1969 Ford ramp truck, but it doesn't, a ramp truck is like a, I, I love them. I, I, mean, I really do love ramp trucks, but a ramp truck is like a one trick pony. Okay. You know, you can only really use it as a ramp truck where this thing here, when it's, when it's not being used to tow, it's, it's just, it's a pickup truck. It's a regular pickup truck. It'll fit in any space that a pickup truck will fit. And it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't take any special requirements or anything like that. And I use this for a lot of things. Like I've used, I've, well, obviously it's like, it's like a mobile engine puller, right? Engine hoist. Um, I've used this thing to pull trees out of the ground. I've, I use it for all sorts of things. It's like a Swiss army knife. So I'm going to work on this to make it the best tow vehicle that I can make it. So that's what we're doing now. We're going through everything. I'm refreshing all of the, the half-assed things that have been done to it and added to it by me, because most of the stuff I've done with this truck so far was like, oh geez, it won't run. Here, hook this up. You know, you can jump this wire out, do that. Because, it, you know, it's, it just hasn't been cared for. Time to care for it now. So as I was saying, it's shortcomings and it's 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 a it's a capable tow vehicle but if you got to take a car to the track especially i'm an open trailer guy i like open trailers because the open trailers again you see like like a, a, a clo an enclosed trailer is a one-track pony they're really nice but they're kind of difficult to deal with and i i like a flat i like the flat tow you know just just open trailer so when you when you go in like that you're really limited on on capacity so the nice thing about like a ramp truck is that a ramp truck has tool bins and whatnot built into the sides, which very hard to do on this one because the floor of this is low and your, your side skirt area here is shallow. So this is about the only area I have to, I have to work with if I wanted to put compartments in the side. It's, I, I mean, I may eventually do something with it, but it, it, it's not worth the effort. Like the, the, the fruit's not worth the squeeze on doing that. So one of the things that I'm doing right now is uh, I'm working on finding places, creating places to put essential road things or, or track things into it. So I don't have to load it and loan load it. Every time we've used this, the bed gets piled up with all sorts of odds and ends. And then, you know, you got, you got, to, you can't just leave this thing sitting outside with tools and jacks and stands and everything just laying on there. So loading it and unloading it is a pain. So I'll show you one of the things I've done here. I just finished this last night. Hey, am I the only one who, who takes the air out of the tires, who flattens the tires when they got to work on one of these things? It's, I tell you, I, it's like I almost avoid working on this because it's such a pain reaching over everything. I did, just to get at the distributor, because it's a small box, so the distributor's in the back, and just, it's, it's like, ah, you got to climb in there and work with it. So, check this out. You're going to like this. This this area right here has been is dead. It's like this, it's like a it, just a wide open space. So what I did here was I boxed this in. I made a floor for it. I don't know if you can you can see that. I made a floor for it, and then I made a frame out of this box tubing. So now I can pack the jack, the floor jack, you know, and, and here's the uh, the handle for it these jack stands right will fit neatly on that now and then i have this big compartment that i can fill with you know there's a gallon of oil in there now um i've got this big compartment that i can fill with all the other odds and ends um tie downs chains uh i gotta come along in there already so i'm just i, I, I think i think it's a pretty creative use of space Honestly, I like it. So, and it, it doesn't interfere with the engine at all. We got plenty of room to do everything on the engine. And uh, 
Now we went we went the rat rod route. I welded a couple of these metal signs in place. I don't, I don't think it looks bad. I like it. I like it. A couple of hours, a little creativity, a little flux core, and we have a, a nice trunk-like compartment. And uh, so the, the motor, this is a 360, it's really strong. I just swapped out, I had a, uh, I had a, a quadrigen on here and I had lots of issues with this thing um, vapor locking. On a highway, anything of like 90 degrees, going up a hill, it would vapor lock like crazy. Nothing I, I tried worked. I, I put a heat shield underneath it. I, ran, I routed the fuel lines away from everything. Nothing would work. When you really stepped on this thing on a hot day, it would vapor lock like crazy. So I swapped out my crusty quadrajet for a, uh, my equally crusty thermo quad. We, I tell you, this thing runs really good. Um, and the, the reason I had the quadrajet on there to begin with is because I couldn't find a choke pull off for this thing. But I'm, I'm actually, I've got the, the last NOS thermo quad choke pull off on the planet right there. So, and, uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is doll it up under the hood a little bit. We got to, we got to degunk all of this. I'm thinking maybe a set of chrome valve covers or, you know, or something, right? Just something to like give it a little, little life, a little personality. Um, it's a cool truck. I want to make it cooler. It's definitely a keeper. You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely a keeper. So it's worth it for me to put whatever efforts I need to into it. I guess says in the back here, there's, I, it's, you can't really put drawers or, 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 or compartments underneath. So I'm thinking about building something into this section right here that'll hold tools. Or, or just pick up a prefab toolbox that'll fit in the area. But it's got to be something that's weatherproof because I don't want to be taking the thing on and off, on and off. It's got to be something permanent. So, but I'm, but I'm working my way backwards on it. And... Uh, what else did I? What else did I do with this? Oh, I got to do the rear end. Uh, it's got, it's got, the, it's got a Dana 60 in it, and it's you know it's an open. Obviously, it's an open Dana 60. Well, not obviously, but it's an open Dana 60. And uh, the pin, the, the the pin that carries the spider gears, it's wallered out the uh, the uh, the carrier. You know where the pin goes through, and it fits into the carrier. It's wallered out a little bit. So I've got a. I've got to change the carrier on it, and uh, I want to do that before we go race Andy and Andy next month. So that's the next the next project on this. And then of course Kathy, Kathy actually loves this truck. She loves this thing, so she's wanting to put a paint job on it. She's wanting to do something. Uh, right now it's it's white rust-oleum, white black and white rust-oleum. So she's wanting to actually do a paint job on this thing over the winter. So, uh, let's see what she comes up with. I'm going to leave that to her. So, so that's, that's the latest on the goings-on at the UTG Global Command Center. And uh, we're on it and having fun. And I'll see you tomorrow.